Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another online battle. This is Shogun 2 and I'm showing you my forces deployed here. So on the left flank I have mounted gunners followed up by two hidden uh, sword units. Then over here I have two strong Yari cavalry followed by light cavalry and matchlocks. In the center I have two speared, two spear Ashigaru units backed up by these Naginata monks and some more lone swords. So these spear units are good against horses. The sandwiched units, the sword troops are good against you know other swords and the Naginata are good all around. Over on this hidden flank, I have two light cav and a bow unit, and my opponent, on the other hand, has a lot of hidden troops, um, or I shouldn't say that many, but he does have a good hidden component in addition to these strong Yari cavalry. So right from the start, I have more troops than him, but mine are relatively low quality, and he outclasses me in um, the, the skill and the uh, stats of all of his units, essentially. His cavalry force is exceptionally... Uh, stronger than mine and so what I'm gonna have to rely on is my mobility and this is gonna be teaching you how to effectively use light cavalry in the face of more experienced stronger Yari cavalry as you can see here my forces just staring off at the distance at his troops my uh, foot soldiers moving up eerily seeing banners moving in the background so they can't get a sight of what's going on over here I feign a retreat as his army's redeploying and then I charge back with my light cavalry right into his bow cav. So these are heavily upgraded bow cav. They're not very good at hand to hand so I charge in, get a good amount of kills and then retreat. So what you want to do with your light cavalry is um, they are cheap and they're faster than any other cavalry so make lightning strikes in and out where your opponent least expects them. So here I pretended to retreat and all of a sudden attacked right when he thought I wouldn't um, you know, uh, turn around. So make sure that you use your light cavalry to again needle your opponent, make it make use of the little uh, mistakes that he makes, and then go ahead and take on his units that he doesn't want to lose. So in this case, I'm kind of throwing away this unit to try and get more kills on his bow cav. I thought I would get more, but um, what I do is I foolishly let them chase his troops all the way across the front. So as we're doing this, I take a tremendous amount of damage from his bows, his matchlocks. We're just getting destroyed here. And basically all I was trying to do was weaken his bow cavalry unit. I was not able to inflict that many uh, more kills. But that's the benefit of bringing these light cavalry. They're, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's a bit sad to say, they're disposable. So I have a lot of those small cheap units, and so I'm able to throw them away, even if it just gets me a couple kills against his stronger units. Now over here, you can see, because I have so many of these units, I'm able to just swarm around his troops. And so that's what I'm doing here. Um, I'm managing another part of the battle, so he will get a sudden charge with his uh, spears right here. I lose five or six troops before I'm able to disengage. Um, but you can see I pulled his troops off the hill, and now my troops on foot will have a hill advantage. As I'm retreating and moving these forces, he goes ahead and he engages my motionless cavalry here. So my opponent did a good job of attacking my troops. He had good micromanagement. At this point, I slipped up in my micro. But what my opponent did wrong as he engaged all his cavalry right here, trying to pull me in. So I'm able to collapse this entire front onto him, you know, smash up his troops. And that's what my opponent did wrong, is I have so many more troops than him that I'm able to basically collapse everything on his troops when he gets close. So here, even though he does score a good amount of kills, I'm able to hit him back with more forces. So you'll see that on multiple occasions during this battle. My opponent does hit these big strikes with his cavalry, but he concentrates his forces too much, and I'm able to do a good amount of damage. Now, the reason he did this is because he does actually have hidden forces in the forest that will be revealed later. So what he was trying to do with this, and I didn't know it at the time, was basically uh, feign a weakness uh, and sort of pull my forces into the center, get them thinking that those were only the only forces. Here you can see, once again, I'm needling with my light cav. I knew his cavalry were retreating, and so that's the perfect time to attack because your opponent has to uh, manually control those forces, and so you have to go ahead and attack elsewhere. You can see here, he had some hidden cavalry on the flank, so that's why he wanted to draw my forces in, um, and so he was able to attack my mounted gunners. I got off some shots, but not enough, and he's routing them. So my opponent was smart. He had this clever trap um, put into place. But I'm able to just swarm him with my sword troops. Not the best, but once his forces stop moving and his cavalry are stationary, the numbers of my forces are going to be able to do a good amount of damage on him. Uh, they're upgraded, and I have reinforcements coming in. So my, my opponent had a really good tactics. He concentrated his cavalry forces and charged one of my units, destroyed them, caused me to fold in among on them, and what he wanted to do 
was then take those hidden units and hit my collapse forces on the side, but I had uh, hidden units of my own. And you can see there, I had my bow cavalry shooting at his general, you know, uh, trying to whittle them down. He decides to flank attack, try and get rid of these cavalry. Now I deploy a, a holding force of Lone Sword Ashigaru against his Naginata warrior monks, so the warrior monks are much stronger than mine, so I have to send reinforcements. Over here he launches his cavalry again in a big frontal assault. Now I'm willing to take the losses of this unit because I know every kill I get is going to be you know, helping me out. These are really strong powerful units that he's charging in and I don't really care too much about this match lock. I just want his forces to suffer a loss and to get bogged down. But you can see here from the perspective of my troops it's just an utter massacre. Um, and as he does that once again I collapse my forces on him. I know he has no more tricks up his sleeve. And over here you can see kind of the epic fighting uh, you get in first person, stabbing his warrior monks in here. Um, so it's a close, hot, contested battle up in these woods. And I'm going to keep reinforcing it and doing some hammer and anvil strikes with my light cavalry into the back of these forces. So you can see here once again, um, as my opponent is distracted moving his forces around, I attacked once more with my light cavalry. So what you want to do is I would recommend bringing at least you know two or three light cavalry units and place them around the back of your opponent and just hold them there. And once you're engaged somewhere else and your opponent's distracted, that's when you strike with those forces. So that's what I like to do is I like to focus on micromanagement, get my opponent distracted somewhere and then all of a sudden do these lightning strikes out of nowhere with my fast maneuverable light cavalry. So again you can see here an example of his superior cavalry getting bogged down. You know here again light cavalry being very very useful they charge in and attack his general at the last minute and I'm able to kill his general so that will have a negative morale effect on his troops you know his general won't be able to shoot at me he won't be able to inspire his forces and on the other hand I still have my general alive so he has some cavalry behind my lines here um, and they don't really have anywhere to go I have spear forces here and so he tries to retreat but I try and uh, I essentially sandwich him corner him with my light cavalry so you can see here, those are Yari Cavalry, and I'm able to essentially kill them with Light Cavalry. So even though Light Cavalry are cheaper and weaker, in numbers you'll be able to get your opponent out of position and basically kill his more heavily upgraded Cavalry. So it ends up being beneficial to you, it just does take a good amount of micromanagement. So I've essentially wiped out his forces on this side, and I'm going to start redeploying. Now what happened now is the tide of the battle has turned around in my favor. I now have cavalry superiority. He has lost all his cavalry units. So what that means is he is uh, rendered entirely immobile, which allows me to go and attack in and out, in and out with these small forces here, expose his troops, and you see on the left those forces moved up and I shot them. So I'm able to, again, I like to use the expression needle him, make small jabs here and there until he's finally uh, you know, about to collapse. So here I'm doing fake charges with my cavalry, trying to get his spears out of position. When they finally do move, you know, another one of my forces finds the gaps and uh, moves in. So once my cavalry have made his forces sufficiently disoriented, that's when I'm going to deploy my main forces, which are going to be, you know, my uh, sword units and my spear units. So cavalry right now are relatively disposable, so I toss them in just to disrupt his lines. And then I throw together the rest of my forces for a full-on frontal assault. Now this strategy works well, and uh, it's won me many battles, but you are going to lose a good amount of troops. So the benefit of my army is it's a cheap army, and it's a large army. So when you have that kind of force, you won't be able to beat any of his troops head on, because usually the opponent who has less forces has more upgraded forces. So you're going to have to maneuver around his forces, deploy ambushes, and use a whole variety of swarm tactics in order to, to, uh, to beat him. So once again, you know, here's the victory, and I'm going to go ahead and recap it for you real quick, just so you can uh, absorb some of the information and some of the lessons that can be learned from such a victory. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. Again, I'm going to emphasize the light cavalry, how I turned the superiority of his troops against him. Uh, I was able to do these lightning strikes with my more disposable units, and wreak pretty significant damage on exposed units, so these bow cavalry here, and later, you know, archers or various stragglers, I was able to attack with my light, cheap cavalry units. Now, on the other hand, my opponent had strong cavalry forces. He did use them pretty well, but the main flaw was that he concentrated his forces too much. You see right here, the third unit charging in doesn't really have anywhere to charge, so that charge would have been just as effective with two units, and the third one could have attacked my reinforcing units. So I was able to bog down his forces, 
and collapse in on him. Now again, you saw this was kind of his plan with his hidden forces on the side, but I was able to attack those um, and hold them down. Again, here my opponent um, decides that this is a juicy target, but because of the fact that I'm able to kill a good amount of his elite units with this disposable force, um, it really doesn't matter. I'm just, you know, I have a larger force, so anything I can do to whittle down his troops, even if it results in pretty high losses for me, I'll be able to take it because I know I have more troops overall. So, you know, I use a variety of common, uh, you know, tactics to get rid of his cavalry forces. This renders him immobile. Then I can go ahead and pick and choose where I want to attack him. And then I deploy my main forces when I feel he's on the ground and I'm going to deliver the final blow. So that's how you want to basically take your cavalry inferiority and make it a cavalry superiority. Again, using light cavalry, ambushes, etc. Um, yeah, once again, I'd like to thank my opponent for the battle. He fought very well. Here you can see the number of deployed troops. I had twice as many uh, troops as he did, so that was to my benefit. And he actually killed more forces than I did. And you can see here some of my forces lined up. My spear units actually got a good amount of kills. And uh, you can see here, you know, pretty good kills overall. Um, and when we switch over to his forces, you can see, you know, they were way more veterans. So his nuns, for example, had 75 troops and they killed 211. So he had more elite troops that killed more of my guys, but I was able to whittle them down using my larger superior force in that way. Anyways, thanks so much. I'll see you guys next time.